I don't care. Ruin my asshole at this point. Hey guys, Jim here. Welcome in once again. Today I am really, really, really excited because I get to unbox for the first time a knife that I have been chasing for so damn long. For those that may recall, sometime last year, the incredible Brian Brown Jaeger M was introduced. And I brought out the video on my Plain Jane Titanium and it made it into being one of the top three knives for all of 2022. And to this day, I still love it. I carry it. If I walk past the case that has it in there, I'll pull it out and flick it and play with it, even if I'm not going anywhere. Just because it's one of those knives that has endeared itself to me so deeply. It really is one of those knives that I don't think that I could ever live without having. Now, that being said, while I love that one, and I did purchase the black version that had the, the blue anodized pivot collar, I only bought that one because I couldn't get this one. When I saw this one in the original images from the, the pre-order that was on Brian Brown's website, I went nuts. I knew I absolutely had to have it, and I never was able to shake one loose. Specifically, the flipper variation, because the one that I did find somebody selling a few months in was a non-flipper, and while I do often reverse flick this knife, I still want to have the flipper because it's still my preferred method for opening this knife. I just love how that detent feels, and I love that ting that it makes. It's just, it's just such an, an amazing, amazing knife. You could tell I'm excited because my uh, tongue's all tied up. So a couple days ago, or last week I should say, I get a message in my Instagram and uh, dude says, hey, are you still looking for this particular variant of the Jaeger M? I'm like, yeah, absolutely. I said, like, do you know of one for sale? He goes, yeah, one just popped up on Facebook in one of the Facebook groups. So he let me know which one it was. And luckily it was a group that I was a part of. And even more amazingly, it was actually a buddy of mine that was selling this. His name is Michael. I'm not going to give you his full name because I don't have his permission to do so. However, Michael uh, used to live somewhat locally to me back when I lived in Dallas. He was about 40, 45 minute drive away. And he's one of those dudes that absolutely loves trading, buying, selling knives. Actually, I think he prefers trading more than selling. Anyway, uh, he goes through a lot of knives, a lot of knives, really, really great knives from uh, production to mid-tech to custom, everything in between. And when I saw that it was him selling it, it actually made me a lot happier because I knew what I would be getting would be in flawless condition. It would be like a brand new knife. It would be well cared for. And I wouldn't have to pay a stupid amount of money. The price that he had on it in the midst of his huge sale of many, many knives Really wasn't that bad, but I still I still asked him to come down just a couple of bucks, I think like 20 bucks, just so I felt like I was getting a little bit of a bro deal or whatever. And uh, so I didn't try to beat him up on it, and he certainly didn't beat, beat me up on it. Michael's a really, really phenomenal person. Uh, he actually has helped me do stuff around my shop uh, a couple of times. The last time was he actually helped me pack up stuff and make the uh, the move when I was moving all the way out here to the East Coast. So when I saw his name on the post, I was so happy because one of the last things that uh, that I did when I saw him right before I moved was I sold him one of my knives, maybe a month or two before I had moved. And I've never had a chance to buy one from him. So this was my opportunity to purchase one directly from him. And oh, it feels so good. So, which variation was it? That is the Sunset Orange. This is the knife that as soon as I saw it in the initial photography, I knew I had to have it. The one non-flipper that I could have gotten, I ended up not jumping on. And the next one that I saw somebody sell didn't have a lot of coloration in the carbon fiber. I think it had a lot of orange, but almost no yellow. 
And it just really wasn't a pattern that I was super happy with. So as I take a look at this, wow, that is gorgeous. This is the first inlaid version I've had of the Jaeger M as well. At some point, I do probably want to find a Brittany Blue. So if you know anybody with a Brittany Blue, let me know because I'll probably be up for it. All right, let's get down to the tabletop and get some close-up looks at this. And maybe you'll understand why I am as excited as I am. I am almost beside myself with joy right now. I really, really, really love how this thing looks. And it's a different kind of feel, too. Pretty fantastic. All right, let's go take a look at it. Oh, man. So super stoked about this. Very, very excited. A lot of it is because I've just been waiting so damn long to, to get this. To even have one to see in person, because I've never handled any of the inlaid version. And I certainly haven't seen one of the Sunset Orange in person yet. And I got to tell you, it still doesn't take away from my love of the Plain Jane. There's something about it that feels very, very different. I mean, they both have a very similar action. This one has a slightly, ever so slightly weaker detent. And I really hesitate to say the word weaker because it's not weak in any way. It's just that this one, there's a crispness to it that that one doesn't have. But they're virtually identical. And... Obviously, the knife feels a little bit thicker because the inlays do sit proud. They're not flush inlays. So there's a little bit of a thickness difference. And the pivot is completely flush, whereas this one is almost completely flush. Really, really like this a lot. Now, if you're looking for a video that gives you a full review on this with specs and all that important shit, at the very end of the video, I will link up my original review is very, very thorough with this one. This one's really just to kind of show the differences between them for those that haven't seen it. I know a lot of people did get their hands on multiple variations of Jaeger M's when they released last year. I was not one of them. I had gotten this one. And then, I don't know, probably three months later, I was able to find somebody selling that all black one with the, uh, the blue pivot collar. And for some reason, it didn't seem to me like this one did. So I only kept that one for a few days, turned it right around, sold it for what I paid for it, and just kept holding out for the Sunset Orange. This was the first time, by the way, that I had fallen in love with a knife in Sunset Orange. This is now my second knife in Sunset Orange Carbon Fiber. And while I love the other knife too... This is just on another level, just because the Jaeger M itself is on another level. Hey guys, sorry for the interruption, but I promise I will make this very, very brief. I want to thank those of you that have joined and become channel members. You are helping to support the channel and helping to continue the growth. And if you've been considering supporting the channel in any way, shape, or form, because I do not have channel sponsors, uh, I don't shill anybody's products, I don't get paid for anything, I don't do affiliate links, so everything is completely self-funded. If you'd like to help out and watch the channel grow and get more great content coming your way, please do consider becoming a member. And that other knife is the Devo Knives Stout which is one that I still carry religiously, absolutely love it. But it's a different, it's a completely different kind of knife in the way that it feels, the action, everything else, and obviously the, uh, the pattern in the carbon fiber is significantly different. And what this was, the, the original version of this knife that I got was the, the copper-infused carbon fiber. And then when Kevin had ordered additional scale sets. He ordered a whole bunch. He ordered 80s and 
a whole bunch of other ones. And then I saw he had the Sunset Orange, and I ordered that immediately. And again, as a consolation prize for never having gotten my Jaeger in Sunset Orange. Now that I have it, oh, I couldn't be happier. I might just switch back to the original copper-infused carbon fiber because that was really a good look. Really looked fantastic on the Devo. I still love that knife so much. What a good workhorse of a knife and significantly lower price than the Jaeger M as well. So if I had to choose to keep only one of these right now, uh, I can't even say what that choice would be because I really am still madly in love with the Plain Jane Full Tie. And this was something that I had mentioned in, in a recent video that just because a knife is plain tie doesn't mean that it's a boring knife. Just the difference with the, the radial satin finish in the pivot and pivot collar and the beautiful belt satin on that deep hollow grind on that M390 blade with the horizontal or hand rub satin on the flats. This knife was exciting enough to me just the way it is in bead blasted titanium. And that will probably always be a favorite in my collection. But now that I've got this, I think I'm going to put a lot of time into carrying this one over the next few weeks and see if it's a little bit smoother and see if it's going to be as beloved as my original Jaeger. And uh, in anticipation, waiting for the mail carrier to arrive with this, I even uh, changed my watch to match the damn knife today. How ridiculous is that? It's not a perfect match, but at least it's got yellow in it. And this is the uh, the orange and yellow here in the carbon fiber. I'm really glad that it worked out the way that it did because if I had if I had bought the other one that I had seen, the pattern wasn't quite as nice. And like I said, I didn't see much of the the yellow orange in there. It had more of the darker orange, and then obviously the uh, the carbon fiber. But I really wanted that contrast of the, the the lighter and the darker oranges. I really wanted to see that contrast. One thing I didn't realize, I guess I hadn't paid close enough attention to the pictures, was I didn't realize that it had the dark titanium clip and the dark titanium backspacer. Oh, I, I see a little nick there on the end of the clip, so... Uh, a couple little marks, little carry marks. So he did carry it, but it's obviously not abused. A little snail, a little snail trail back there. But in overall condition is fantastic. I couldn't be happier. Blade is perfectly centered. Everything feels as it should. No blade play there. No blade play side to side. It is fan friggin tastic, man. Could not be happier. I'm so glad to finally have this in the collection. What a great pair. And to this day, I still think the Jaeger M is one of the best all around compact carry knives that you can get your hands on. It feels great in the hand. It, the, the action is fantastic. There is a wonderful enjoyment that you get out of flipping it with the flipper tab or reverse flicking it through the blade window. It's got a scary sharp edge, a nice, deep, deep hollow grind. Very, very deep, and you see that usually when, you, uh, when you're when you looking right here. A little too close to my camera. Let's see if we can back it up a little bit here. What focus? Yeah, not so much. Oh, well, I tried. Anyway, it comes down to a very, very thin edge. These are great performers. If you have yet to get yourself a Jaeger M, what the hell are you waiting for? Don't even make excuses for why you shouldn't have one. You absolutely need to have a Jaeger M if you like somewhat smaller knives. Because, again, this is not a big, giant knife. This is his medium size that he made into production. And as beautiful as the customs are, and as much as I've always wanted one, I am completely happy with the production version, 
produced by Riot. There's something about the perfection that Riot does that I don't feel like I'm I'm missing anything by not spending two or three times the money to get into a custom. Doesn't mean I won't ever have one. I'm certainly going to try. But I feel very, very happy, very fortunate to have even just the uh, the production. And especially now that I have the, uh, I want to say match set, but the the twin to it. Very handsome, very, very cool knives. And something that performs really great in, in every respect. So it really is one of those knives that I can't really pick apart. I've never really found a negative to it. And I have carried this a lot since I got it last year. So if there was any flaw there that was going to bother me, it would have already stood out by now and it would have already become an issue. And it just hasn't. It's one that I reach for often. I have my own snail trails on there from, from carrying it myself. It's just not a knife that I plan to ever abuse. So it'll always, hopefully it will always look fairly close to new. What a dramatic pair. Love how that looks. Anyway, I just wanted to share that with you guys. Thank you for watching as always. Stay tuned in the next couple of seconds here and there'll be a card that pops up with the original full review of the, uh, the Plain Jane Titanium Variation. And any questions that you may have about it should be answered in that review. If not, please feel free to comment down below and shoot me a question. And if you have Jaeger M's of your own, put in the comments down there, which variation did you go for or which variations if you have multiples? I'm very interested to hear how people, how people chose. Because there were a couple, that, a couple inlay versions that really didn't do it for me. For me, it was definitely the Sunset Orange, then right below that was the Brittany Blue. And then I was cool. I didn't really need any other ones after already having this one. So I think at some point, I will continue my search for a Brittany Blue. And, the, and since things have cooled off on these a bit now, a year later, people aren't really selling them for crazy amounts of money. You're, you're pretty much going to get them for what they initially sold for, and maybe even a few dollars less. So that's the good thing about letting, letting the market cool a little bit on a hot, hot, hot item is you're not going to ridiculously overpay for it. And I think on these, if I, if I was searching for the Brittany Blue, I think if I come across one, I'll probably be really close to where they were at their original price. And for me, that is completely fine. I think that these are an incredible value at the 400 range that they sell in and I don't need to try to find one for 250 or 300 or anything like that. I can easily justify the full price on these because they're absolutely worth it. All right, with that, I'm out of here, and I'll see you on the next video.